Jesse Anderson, Tammy Lopes, here with you another episode of the American Iron Gym podcast. Today's very special guest, Levi Evans, who you may not recognize him because he looks a whole lot different than he did not too long ago. Down, what, 200 pounds? Yeah. 80-85. Still counting. <laughs> Still counting. So, so um, a little history on Levi. Levi was one of the top ranked strongman in the U.S. not too long ago. And what was your weight then? I was about uh, 275, 285 ish. Okay. I'll say ish. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm about 5'11, 6 foot. Okay. 6 foot when I'm happy. Okay. And you maintained that weight, why? What was the. The whole purpose uh, to be big was to be strong. And uh, I was just trying to be a big <coughs> strength competitor in, in the sport of strongman. And, uh, well, you succeeded. I tried. I didn't do as well as I would have liked and hoped, but it was fun. It was good. It was a good time, and um, yeah, it took a lot of work. Yeah, it does, right? Any any sport, any sport at that level takes an immense amount of dedication. Yeah. And you think about everything that you need to do every day, and if it's going to affect your training and your performance. Yeah. It's... And part of that was the diet. Oh yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, talk to us a little bit about what your diet was then? When I was 275, 285, it may not seem like it, but it took a lot for me to maintain that weight. Because when I graduated high school, uh, I was roughly 160, 165. If, wow. Yeah, I was, I was skinny. I, I played soccer and uh, skateboard. I was, I was a small little thing. And uh, <laughs> for some reason, I was like, I want to get big and strong. And so, um, to get that big and strong, I had to just nonstop eat throughout the day, and I'd have like something we call triple decker peanut butter and butter jellies. <laughs> peanut butter you, and butter jelly. Yeah, so you have three pieces of bread, peanut butter, butter jelly, peanut butter, butter jelly. Nice. That, that would be a, that would be a few times a day. Sounds pretty good to me. It was, it's delicious. <laughs> I'm not gonna like butter. Butter's delicious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd eat potatoes, eggs. Wide variety of meats, pizzas, hamburgers. They knew my, they knew my name at McDonald's. So about how many calories a day? Oh man, um, I wasn't counting. I, uh, I, uh, no, I went off know. of. Uh, if you I didn't went get off bigger, of, you weren't eating. Yeah, if I wasn't bloated, then something was wrong. If I was like feeling okay, then I'm like, wait, something's off here. <laughs> I need to eat food. But actually, one day I did um, try calculating it a little bit, and I was. Seven or eight thousand. Wow. So, and I think I was. So the food bill. Was that was under. That was underestimated. Still, actually, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't that, including some things. But yeah, it was a lot of food to uh, get that big. And how long? How long were you competing at that level, and how long were you that big? Um, I was that big for a while. A few years. I was. I was pretty big for a few years, and then sometimes I would cut down a little bit because of something, and then I'd try and get all big, big, big and strong again, and. Um, I, I would compete. I was competing uh, in strength sports, and I guess you can kind of consider that I still kind of am uh, for about five, five, six, seven weeks. Yeah. Ish. So uh, yeah, it's for a little bit. Um, and I was uh, fairly serious about it there for two to three. So tell us what you did before. What What's your athletic history like? Were you always into strength strength sports, sports, or were you? into team sports, what did you do? It's a great question. <laughs> I was always put into sports. Uh, I was, uh, I come from a very athletic family, and so soccer, baseball, football, I tried basketball there for a second. <laughs> for, a second. <laughs> for a second until I couldn't make a ball. Um, even some individual sports, uh, like skateboarding, dirt biking was a big thing because I grew up in a lot of dirt. Rugby was, was a big part of growing up because my dad played a lot of rugby. And to be fair, I didn't start lifting weights until I was in high school, when I was a junior senior year, and just because it was fun and I didn't take it super seriously. I didn't start taking uh, a lot of the curls. A lot of curls. A lot of actually chest. That's yeah. why I was still good at bench when I was done <laughs> uh, in high school. <laughs> and everything else was just skinny. Um, like I probably had like 40 pounds in my chest. Um, but yeah, I didn't start actually like seriously lifting weights until I was about 18 or 19 years old. But uh, 
and that was because you know, my dad really got, like I said, he pretty much got, got me into everything that, I was, that I've been into. He was big in weight training. So I uh, started trying to lift some weights with him, and I don't know, something happened. So, uh, I, I grew up watching a lot of World's Strongest Man. It was always on at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was on Saturdays and Sundays <laughs> on ESPN. And we always watched World's Strongest Man, and I loved it. It was so much fun. And it was crazy when I heard that you could, like, there were gyms here in Reno, gym here in Reno, uh, that had the equipment for it. And so everyone was like, you need to go here, you need to go here. So I came to American Iron. And well, your dad was a member here. Yeah, he was. Uh, when he was Flex. Uh, How old were you when you decided to start training strongman and stuff? 20. 20. 20 ish. That's about right. 20. So tell us a little bit about that kind of training. Because I don't think a lot of people understand what strongman is and what the training tells. Oh. Um, I mean, strongman's not a whole lot different than any other strength sport. People think it's crazy because you're pulling a truck, but it's. Eh. I think there's other crazier things like squatting a thousand pounds, but um, it's it's a lot of the basic power movements, really. You need strong legs, you need a strong back, you need strong triceps, you need strong shoulders, you need a strong head. Very strong, yeah. <laughs> you need really, you need to have, you need a little, it's, a, it's a huge mental part as well, so uh, yeah, um, you need to be strong everywhere. Um, because And you also had to have endurance as well, so you had to kind of have a little bit of... Uh, cardio aspect to it, but luckily you only had to go for like 60 or 90 seconds. <laughs> so. so some com compound training oh, absolutely. and a lot of strength training, right? Absolutely. So, no. A lot of functional training because um, you just, you don't under, you don't know what's going to be at, what sort of thing is going to be at this competition. I mean, you have an idea, it gives you a list, but at the same time, like, how so it's different, right? Things? Oh yeah, always. But always. I feel like in the strong end, there's so many different variables on like powerlifting. You might get a weird squat rack or something, but I mean, could be the weather, you know, all the conditions that apply. I mean, even like the stones, I mean, what they're made of, and it's just, I mean, yeah, you know, it's just consistent. Yeah, even when you do know the events, they could be different at different farmers carry. Oh, the bigger, yeah. smaller, the log could be a different size. And those sorts stones of could be made different. All the time. Those are always, man, I always try and get, a, get my hands on whatever equipment's going to be used at that competition that day. Not just, oh, okay, here's a log. They have a log here as well. Uh, it's got to be similar. It is similar, but there's I always know. differences. I feel like the weights, too, I mean, something like, oh, yeah, that's a 100-pound tire, but it's really like 250 or something. I think that was supposed <laughs> to be 250-pound log. No, let's make it like 270. <laughs> so what does that mean to your training? Oh, you need to do everything. You, need to do you everything. couldn't have any sort of weaknesses. Um, and you had to really be able to pinpoint your weaknesses. You had to really understand where your weaknesses lie. So you're only as strong as your weaknesses. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. Or you had to really make up for that strength <laughs> and completely ignore that weak link. I did that a lot. And what did that do? That really didn't do too well for me. Cost. <laughs> so what, what are you dealing with now because of that? So um, a little bit of background. I stopped playing soccer when I was 16 years old because I hyperextended my knee and I tore uh, a variety of ligaments in the knee. And Soccer's bad. Soccer's so <laughs> bad. Soccer's just ridiculous. Um, and oddly enough, though, you look at the sports that, like, I would rugby almost immediately after soccer and then strongman and car, car lifting, right? And you're like... That feels better on your knee, and you're like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't until recently, whenever I, I finally got done with the competition, like limping away, hobbling away, I had to jump on Jesse's back to get out of this competition, <laughs> basically. And this competition was done. Um, finally, after that point, I'm like, I need to go. Like, I need to go take a look at this. And actually, I got an MRI on my knee with blood on my shins because of the Day of the Dead. <laughs> you're bleeding, sir. Yeah, I know, but. Don't worry about it. You're I'm not gonna... bleeding, you're not doing death Exactly, right? right? And yeah. so I later found out that ACL, MCL, PCL, meniscus, patella tendon, they were all a little, a little rough. And so I'm, lo I'm having some, oh, some, some fun with it now uh, because I didn't train as far as I would have liked to when I was a kid. <laughs> so. so there's another really interesting thing about um, Levi. The 
He's been in school this whole other time. Than other, other, other than his name. <laughs> He's been in school this whole time. Um, for what, Levi? Um, so I have my undergraduate degree in dietetics, also known as nutrition, um, and I'm getting my master's in nutrition, and I'm moving on for my PhD with a focus on nutrition. So a lot of nutrition. So you're an athlete that actually has decided to really learn about one really important part of being a su successful athlete, and that's the nutrition part. Mm -hmm. So with that knowledge, how many pounds have you lost and why? Why did you do it? So total, I have, I've lost 80 or 85 pounds. Um, the big reason why, I, I believe, was because of the injuries, the reoccurring injuries, and everyone was just like, why don't you just lose some weight? That'll probably, your knee pain will probably go away, your back pain will probably go away. And uh, so I tried losing some weight, and I tried competing at a, at a lower weight class. And, I mean, I, I, I did, and it was fine, but there was still pain. <laughs> but it, for the overall, the main reason why is because they said it would be easier on my body. Um, and honestly, I wasn't as healthy as I would have liked to be. <laughs> At that way. At that way. So do you so. feel like you're healthier now? I'm a lot healthier now. Um, my diet is a lot more balanced, and my, even my training. My training is, is especially balanced. So You had the benefit of knowing a lot more about nutrition, to be able to do this in a lot more intelligent way than a lot of people do when they lose 85 pounds, right? Yeah. So do you feel that because of that you've been able to keep more muscle and strength on than say someone who just does a bad diet? Absolutely. To get there? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it, it wasn't uh, super difficult for me to, to maintain my muscle mass. Actually, I was looking at it and I think maybe five pounds of my, of my body weight that was lost was muscle. Pretty amazing. Not, so, not horrible. It can be done. It, oh, it absolutely can be done. And uh, but people like to complicate things. People think there's miracles out there, and that these bad diets are, are miracles and in disguise. And they're just like, no <laughs> pill. Um, there's got to be a pill. There's a pill, and I get asked that question a lot. Like, how do I lose weight? Like you did absolutely this quickly. What, what supplements did you take? Oh man, that question. <laughs> yeah. So I get asked that. I, I get asked those sorts of questions a lot. I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Because we all know that I weight, do think I've lost more weight than you. Weight obviously equals strength. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be stronger at 300 pounds than you are at 200 pounds. And both you and Chad lost a significant amount of weight, and that's a big psychological detractive to people. And it's also very difficult. It takes a lot of mental strength to be able to do that. So, Chad, how much did you lose? Somewhere between 85. I mean, like at my highest, I was 397. And I'm around 300, 295 right now. Okay. So you lost about 85 pounds. How did that impact you mentally? I mean, it sucked, but I knew I knew I was going to do it. I knew it was going to happen. So, what was your incentive to do it? My incentive? I'm nuts. <laughs> well, but, I'm bipolar and I'm narcoleptic, and I needed to get it under control. And part of that for me was letting my body heal up and like laying off of some stuff. And if I wasn't going to train like a maniac, I wasn't going to be that big because there was no point. To it. So, for me, it was a logical thing. Like, I need to do this now. And otherwise, I'm going to drive myself into a grave really quick. Was that hard mentally to let go of some of the strength that came along with the weight loss? I don't know if I would say hard. I would say it sucks. I mean, I knew it all along. I've seen too many guys like Anthony Clark and Odie Wilson that were really great guys that helped a lot of people and had a super huge amount of knowledge that they could keep training but I feel like they couldn't let go of the fact that they were like the strongest guy in the world. And so they kept pushing it and kept pushing it where they could have went, hey, I did this. I knew it wasn't going to be that healthy doing the things I do. You don't squat a thousand pounds and be healthy, right. you know? And I, I feel like they could have backed off, got their health better, and still gave so much more to the sport and to the world. And like Anthony Clark did all this great work with kids. So for me, I knew all along that this wasn't going to be the rest of my life. This time, more than just that. 
So what was the outcome for Anthony Clark and Odie Wilson? They both passed away from, from what I consider complications to their size. And how old were they? Uh, they were both in their 30s, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, like way too young, way too young. Way too young, and, and too great of a loss to all the rest of us, because they yeah, were pretty amazing. I've, I've seen men. so many athletes, even in other sports, that get so wrapped up in that that's who they are that they can't let go of it. And, and I knew that from the beginning. I mean, I didn't, it was, I did this, I wanted to break records, I wanted to do that, but I knew there was a time where there's other stuff in life still. Like and not that I'm done lifting now. I just, it's just not going to have that level of importance in my life. And but my health is a little more important right when now. When you think about it, um, it may not be as many, as many pounds on that bar, but in comparison, it can be more. Yeah, it could Body be, weight, yeah. using yeah. a Wilkes yeah. formula or a comparative, you know, formula. If you think <laughs> about it that way. <laughs> what about you? Uh, it's... It took a huge toll. Did it? It took a humongous toll. Emotionally? Oh, emotionally, completely. Like, uh, it was extremely difficult for me. It was, uh, uh, it was very hard. Like, I would, I'm, when I was in here, and I'm lifting this weight that I used to warm up with, and people would even approach me and say, oh man, what are you gonna do today? How much are you gonna lift? You're just warming, you're just warming up, right? And I would hear that, and it's like, no, this is what I'm doing today. <laughs> this is the weight. And people would look at me like, you're joking. That's, that's hilarious. And for me, part of the reason why I wanted to compete and to be strong was to kind of have that little recognition. I, that, you know, I, that's why I urge people to, to compete a little bit. It's like, hey, so you can, not only you recognize that for other people, but um, I, I, I really thrived off of that, unfortunately. Uh, and so, to lose that 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 light a little bit, it hurt a little bit. I saw about pleasure and pain. So the, the, there has to be some pleasure for you to be this weight, right? Versus the pain oh, of yeah. the loss. Oh, so man. what is that? What has what has allowed you to continue to lose the body fat and be healthy, mm -hmm. a lot healthier than you were? A lot healthier. Uh, is that it? Is it the health? Oh is yeah, the... I feel amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more. I remember how my body felt whenever I was lifting heavy and being and, and and how big I was. I remember how my body felt, and it didn't feel amazing. <laughs> um, but you get over that because you're like, for this competition, this competition's coming up. Train through the pain, lift through the pain. That's funny because I would have people go, man, it must be so awesome to be that big, and I go, well, oh, yeah, it definitely. There's definitely some fun to it, but. It sucks sometimes. It's, so, it's horrible to try and maintain because, like, pretty soon, like, food, food lost its taste. Like, oh, even you, now, you I don't even have to force. Like, you don't even care. I, things that care. I loved, I hate it. Yeah, it's. Uh, it was. It was all I have to eat to stay this big. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the only reason why I ate, and so now, um, I'm actually kind of starting to enjoy some food again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's uh, you can have healthier foods while still like having a little bit of flavor. And so uh, I feel amazing now. And I'm able to <laughs> play with my kids without saying, no, I have to worry about my calories being burnt. Sorry, <laughs> fuel. I'm not going to run. I'm not I just don't feel like walking to I, that's <laughs> Well, that's calories burnt, unfortunately, when you're that big, you know? Um, and so now I'm, it's, it's, it's. Making your quality of life is better? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I can move a whole lot better. Uh, my mood has, I finally got over that, and my mood has uh, gotten better as well. Maybe just not only being able to, to, to play with my kids and have fun with them and, and want to go out and do things with them, but I don't mind what I see in the mirror. So nice. That's kind of, that's, that's, uh, that's a big part of it, look, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. I think I always looked at it two years. I gave everything for like over 10 years to one sport. Oh, yeah. And I did, I did okay. No, you just like, did it phenomenal. I mean, no matter, no matter how big I am or how strong I am, like nobody can take away what I gave to the sport and what I accomplished. And right. in, what you're still giving, because you're, you're giving back so much to the sport, you know, helping other lifters and, and being honest about the challenges that you've gone through and hopefully helping other people that have those same challenges mm -hmm. to be able to overcome. And, um, you talk about 
you know, Anthony Clark and O.D. Wilson and, and what they gave back, but you also get a lot back. Not just to power lifters, but and there's to a, and there's a lot of other lifters that are still lifting but not competing at the same level, like right. Dave Tate, Steve Goggins, Ed Cohn. Right. They're still oh, yeah. making a huge difference in the sport, even though they're not putting up the crazy numbers. I think it's kind of a transition, yeah. and if you want, you can make that transition and keep it going, mm -hmm. or just go. This sucks. I'm gonna completely get out of it, or go. I'm gonna stay this big like that. Yeah, there are choices. And I mean, being a super heavyweight powerlifter is not the healthiest thing in the world. <laughs> True. Unfortunately. Although I challenged my doctor to find me someone else at blood pressure that was as good as mine at 385. <laughs> well, was he able to? No. No, okay, all right. Um, so Levi, one of the things, because of your choices in your life and your athletics and um, then your education, you're able to give back to people. So talk to me a little bit about um, helping people with the diet and what that looks like and, and the challenges that you see in others that you can really help them through. So one of the, the biggest things that I try and help people with is really the overall, the big picture uh, part of it. Because as I had mentioned earlier, it's a lot of people want that quick fix, right? And it's like, I often look at nutrition consulting more as psychology. Like we all know what's healthy. We all know eating this salad over this piece of pizza or hamburger or both uh, is a little bit, a little bit better to have this salad over here. Um, but it's getting over that, that psychological barrier, right? And. Why we choose food. Yeah. yeah, and so you need to be able to develop a healthy relationship with food. You need to recognize that it's okay to have this pizza and hamburger sometimes. <laughs> not not for the not for the majority of your diet, but you know it's it's not it's not horrible. It's not it's not going to be this make or break thing, um, but it can be if you let it. Like it's just food. I've heard plenty of people say that it's just food. You can you, know, you can take. What is it going to do to you? You know, you can do a lot, but well, only if you let it. Negative, right? Only if you let it. Absolutely. And uh, there's a, a great quote. It's like, "Let food be, be thy medicine. Let thy medicine be thy food." Is that some Peter, somebody, some Greek, or <laughs> somebody who got conquered. Um, yeah, and uh, and people just need to recognize that it's not a quick fix. It's not. But if you work hard at it and just you, you take three steps forward and two steps back, you still have that extra step, that positive step. So I think it's when I lost weight, I don't like the term diet. Yeah, it's not. I just hate that term. I'd rather call it nutrition. It's just your nutrition. And I was like, nutrition. I don't want to diet. I want to change how I eat so that I can consistently lean out. And that, But it's not so crazy that I'm going to go nuts in two months exactly. and go back to the way I was. Absolutely. And that, and I think thing, that goes to what you said, it's a psychological thing. Go listen, it's nutrition, it's for my body, but there is some enjoyment with it. Mm -hmm. I need to know the limits of, of it's okay to have this every now and then, but most of the time I need to eat this. And, yeah. But it can't be something I completely hate, otherwise I'm not going to stick with it. Absolutely. And I think people overcomplicate nutrition. Um, <laughs> as I've spent so much money on, a, on my degrees, I think people overcomplicate nutrition. So. Calories in, calories out. Calories in, calories, calories out. out. And not every it's calorie can be, yeah, not every calorie can be treated the same. Yes, no. I agree with that. Because um, obviously your carbs and proteins, they're going to act differently in your body. Yes, I understand this. But I think little goals, like let's focus on your calories first. Right. And your consistency with, with staying at a low calorie base. So people that tend to be lean, that's just how they are in their life. They tend to be a little bit lower body fat. They tend to, do you know or do you see any consistencies the habits that they have versus people that maybe tend not to be lean. Yeah, I mean, I've seen those people who are lean and they're just like, why are you lean? I see what you eat. Uh, but a lot of the leaner people, I mean, they're, they recognize that, yeah, a piece of pizza. Well, let's have some leaner meats, some fruits and vegetables. These are, these are the better foods. I've seen that a lot. 
Like that, that's, that's more so the case. So you would say that that's consistency. And they stay consistent with it, yeah. Consistently <laughs> just have better choices. Better choices, healthier foods, and, and, and monitoring things. And being able to recognize what your, what your body responds to and how it responds to certain foods and certain amounts of foods. So. so before we end this, if you could give one nugget of advice out there, what would that be? Chocolate nugget? Oh, dark chocolate. Chicken, chicken nuggets. Nuggets. Oh, no, I don't like dark chocolate. Your, I like the creamy milk and chocolate. Oh, yeah. Chocolate covered chicken nuggets. <laughs> Hog and dogs. Is this happening? Because <laughs> they're so uh, super heavyweight power lifters. <laughs> oh, man. Is there anything that you could share that you think would make a difference in people's lives? Stay consistent, and it's not, and it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's mm -hmm. a marathon. It really is. It took me, it took me over a year to lose this weight. I, that's just, I was the same thing. I'm like, I don't, I don't have to lose it all today because no. I don't want to lose a bunch of muscle anyway. I'd rather lean out, and if it takes a little longer, it takes a little longer. And that's a big thing. Like, the quicker you lose that weight, the better the, the chance of losing you're going to lose muscle. muscle. Yeah. So. And what does muscle do? It burns more calories. Mm -hmm. It keeps you more metabolic. Right? You burn more glycogen and sugars in your diet. And and you it's also that. funny if you ask people, well, how long did it take you to put that weight on? They usually put it on pretty quick, but they want to lose it in two months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you gain that weight over 10 years and you think you're going to lose it in two months. And people often neglect um, the obvious of how bad it is just to lose muscle. Like, that's mm -hmm. horrible for your body. It is. Yeah, That's you know, if you, is so even bad, if you right? keep the it's same calories, bad. you just slowed your metabolism down. basically. Yeah. And so you're now breaking down more fat. On. That muscle could it's, be from your heart. That could be from pretty pertinent organs. So, so it's the only metabolically active tissue in our body. So yeah, right? I feel like a lot of these fat diets, these people are losing a lot of muscle and Absolutely. almost keeping the same amount of body fat. So they're just this weird skinny fat and look probably even worse than they did before. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, important. Well, thank you, Levi. We appreciate your time, your knowledge, and sharing your experience with us. Mm -hmm. And Chad as Even well. Even though it's only half of you. <laughs> <laughs> Salt. Salt in the moon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I'll thanks. give you a hug afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. We appreciate your time and you joining us. And we'll be back uh, next Monday morning at 6 a.m. With something else. <laughs>